Opacity masks can be used for leaves, foliage, clothing, holes, like there's a bunch of different ways to do it. And the setup is actually not that difficult. So today I'm going to share with you guys the process on how you can set up the opacity map channel inside of Substance and create your own opacity maps and use them even inside of Marmoset. So yeah, this is a little bit of the full Substance Painter course that just released a couple of days ago. If you want to support the channel or see the full video, make sure to check the description. And without anything else to add, let's go. Hello, my friends, and let's go now with our opacity channel, which is something that we have not really talked about yet, but it's very, very important. So in your bonus file files or in bonus file folder, you're going to find a little FBX called a banner. And that's this one right here. It's made out of two objects, a little rod and then a banner that is hanging because opacity, or at least for me, opacity, I usually think about like cloth, like rib cloth and things like that. So let's do 2K for now and hit OK. And as you can see, this is what we get. We get this very, very nice um, a banner. It doesn't have high poly. It's actually a triangulated mesh from Marvelous Designer. So, so we're not following, let's say, proper sort of, um, um, what's the word? Proper like retopology and things like that. However, it, it really doesn't matter for, for this example. So let's go to the rod real quick. And let's just add like a gold material to the rod. We don't have, there we go. Oh, we got our, our dwarf gold. Let's use that one. There we go. Now, as you guys uh, know by now, the dwarf gold that we're using needs a couple of extra information to be able to to properly like work right on our elements for the dirt and stuff like that. So we can very quickly go to the baker, 2K, and just bake basic normal mask and basic uh, ambient occlusion masks so that we can utilize all of the elements that we normally utilize here inside of Substance. So, yeah, that's it. Remember, all of this map, or well, some of this map can be exported out later on, but in this case, we're really not going to use it. And as you can see now, we get a little bit of dirt there on the rod. Again, it's not perfect, and we get all of the shadows. We're getting contamination. That's fine. We're going to talk about a cloth, not, not that. So let's go back here, and let's go to our cloth. So let's look for a cloth pattern, such as... I don't know. There we go. Like this uh, fabric, woven, whatever. So if we add it right there, we're going to have this. And one of the things that we can do is we can, of course, increase the resolution, right, to get a, a nicer effect. And let's say this is going to be a red banner, right? So kind of like going into this royal sort of like color. There we go. That looks very nice. So we got our banner. And actually, I think, let me, let me just give it a quick test here because I'm pretty sure at a black mask, let's go to mesh. I'm pretty sure the border, oh no, I thought the border was separated from the from the center of the element so we could have like a gold trim, but we don't. What about UVs though? Because I'm pretty sure, let's go again at a black mask, or let's go UV. No, uh, I really thought we had like a, like a separate trim right there, but now you can see that it's, it's combined. Okay, sorry about that. So now let's talk about opacity. It's very simple. Opacity is one of those like super simple things, but we need to understand that there's two types of opacity. The first one is called the alpha cutout, and the other one is alpha like blending. So similar to how we changed the layer texture on the past bonus chapter, we need to change the material. Instead of using the traditional PBR metal rough material, we're going to use either this one, which is the PBR rough um, metal roughness with alpha blending, or this one, which is the uh, cutout, alpha cutout, or alpha test. So I'm going to use this one first to show you how this works. And again, super simple. We're going to go to texture set settings, and we need to add a channel. In this case, we need to add the opacity channel. Now, if we go back to layers and we add a fill layer, you're going to see that we now have the opacity layer, and by default, it's set to 1. If we set this to 0, boom the element disappears. And this is the interesting thing about this specific material that we're using, the cutout material. It literally cuts out. It's either black or white. You don't have an intermediate option. So as you can see, as long as, as or as soon as we get here, it's completely turned on again. So let's just turn off everything except for the opacity. There we go. And what we can do, of course, is we can add a black mask to this thing right here. And then on the opacity, bring the opacity all the way down. And on this channel right here, if we go, let's say for a very sort of like a rough brush, uh, like this charcoal, whatever. We can start cutting out, look at that, pieces of the fabric. And thanks to the fact, let me use my, my tablet here. Thanks to the fact that this is a, what's the word, a cutout, we can get this very like sharp corners and generate all of these elements. My advice when doing this is try to make it in such a way that's very obvious. Now, you might be wondering, well, what is the difference between this cutout that we're doing right now 
and the other one that we're going to have soon, which is the blending. And as the name suggests, it's a blending. So for, for an object like this, for this sort of like cloth, I would definitely go for a, a cut like this or a, a damage like this, where it's very obvious because you don't want to have like floating bits or pieces like right around there, right? It doesn't doesn't really make sense. It's uh, it's very, it would be quite weird to have something like that on our, on our assets. So this is why this alpha test works very well. Now, also, this is important to know this, uh, performance-wise in all of the softwares, Having a cutout is cheaper than having a blend because with the blend, you need to calculate all of the blend. And with a cutout, you just calculate, is it appearing here or is it not appearing here? If you've done foliage before, you probably have used this method right here, which is a cutout method because leaves and all those sort of like um, organic uh, foliage elements, they utilize a very, very similar uh, process to generate uh, this result right here. And I really like it because not only are we able to like describe or create an, an interesting cut here for our elements, but we're also going to be able to see through it. So when you are on again on your engine or in Maya or wherever, the light is going to shine through this space. So you're going to get more complex shadows and more complex lighting, the fog, everything like you're going to be literally able to see through this thing because we're deleting in this case, one half of the element. I'm going to be showing you how this works in inside of Marmoset uh, later in the video when we export. But yeah, this is it. This could also, and this is another very like important uh, fact about this, if you've done simulations or if we are gonna work with simulations, let's say we want this thing to be like blowing with the wind, it's very difficult if we had all of that like geometry creating this physical hole because it would need to calculate a lot of little things like moving around the wind. Yes, you're going to have like a very realistic result, but it's going to be very heavy. So normally what they do is they will simulate the whole flag, right? So all of this flag and then the holes are just in there, kind of like uh, like cutouts, right? Pasted into the element to generate the result that we want. So yeah, this is it. This is how we would do it. Again, I would strongly recommend that you uh, clean this up so that it makes sense, for instance, all of this right here, let's just remove it. Painting on the UV in this case is probably a little bit better because we can get a little, we can have a little bit more control over where the cuts are gonna be. Just careful here, uh, we've mentioned this before, you can change the projection from alignment to UV so that if we're doing this, it's not hitting like other parts of the element. So it's a way kind of like to, to make sure that we're only painting on the areas where we want to paint. There we go. Make sure that we remove all of the little elements that are not supposed to be there. And that's it. This is, again, a very like easy way to sort of like fake this effect. Now, exporting wise, things change a little bit. So let's go here to export textures. Um, we're going to export, of course, to our bonus chapter right here. We're going to export PBR metallic roughness, but this is very important. If we go to the output templates and we go to our PBR metallic roughness, we need to make sure that there's some opacity being exported. And as you can see right now, here on the base color, there is an alpha channel, an opacity channel, and that is being fed with the opacity mask that we have. So that tells me that we're fine. It's very important. Do not export opacity with a JPEG. JPEGs do not have an alpha channel, and therefore, you're not going to have the information. So normally, I either do PNG, I do TIFF, I do Targa because those have the extra alpha channel where you can like pretty much um, incorporate this information so that you can use it in other softwares. We're of course going to be exporting the metal color as well. So let's just hit export real quick. And if we go here, you're going to see that we have here the banner M base color. Let's open this up in Photoshop real quick. So we can confirm that the alpha channel is right there. Are you guys liking the bonus chapter so far? Hopefully you are, because these are, again, little tools that are, are useful for the, um, for, for certain projects. We, we didn't really use them on the, on the dwarf character, but they're very, very useful. So let's go here to banner base color. There we go. So yeah, there you go. You can see on the channels. In this case, it's already kind of like embedded. So as you can see, we do not have an alpha channel, but there is transparency on the color. So now if we jump into Marmoset real quick, Just wait for this to open. There we go. So what I'm going to do here is I am, of course, going to drag and drop the banner. And if we go to the banner material and we drag and drop the base color here on the albedo map, this is what we get. Now we can go all the way down here to transparency and we're going to select again. It's cutout and dither. Dither is sort of like the smooth version. Oh. 
There we go. So we're going to select cutout. And as you can see, it automatically is using the albedo alpha. So since it's a PNG and the alpha is already baked in in the element, we're already taking this information here into our transparency. And as I mentioned, if we have, uh, actually, we can have it. Let's add here scene, add object. Let's add a shadow catcher. There we go. Let's go to the sky. I'm going to bring the brightness down and I'm going to shine a light right around this angle. With the brightness. And if we use, I believe if we use ray tracing, trying to see if we can see the holes right there. Let's increase the brightness. There we go. So as you can see, the shadows and everything are being projected into the floor, and we're getting that. I do believe you need ray tracing without ray tracing. No, it's actually working without ray tracing. Cool. So yeah, that's pretty much it. As you can see, this is the alpha channel working here inside of this uh, engine, inside of Marmoset, and it's just a matter of connecting. Now, one thing we can do here is we can select this element and see how we don't have a back face. Let's just change this called back faces so that we have a double-sided, again, transparent effect. Now, it will look pixelated. That's the, let's say, unfortunate situation about this alpha, the cutout, that it, it does look very hard. Like the, it, Since it's only black and white, the cutout is going to be very, very hard. However, that can be fixed. If we go back here and want to have a fade, I don't know, maybe this is some sort of like ghost spirit flag or something. Instead of having a rough with alpha test, we can use this PBR metal roughness with alpha blending, okay? So if I do this, as you can see, the element's going to be a little bit softer. We're going to have a little bit of a softness there on the, on the element. Right now, it does look like a cutout. But let's say we want to have this in some sort of like old time temple where things are fading out. Well, we can add another layer here. Turn everything off except for opacity. Have the opacity like very, very minimal or even something like that. Add a black mask. And I'm going to add a generator. And let's add a position generator. Let's invert this position. And there we go. So now, as you can see, the flag is kind of like fading on the back part right here, and it's more solid as it goes towards the top. Is this something that you're going to be using on your games or on your renders? Maybe. I've used this kind of textures for things like ghosts or spirits or sort of like magical stuff where you want to have a little bit more control over the opacity of the, of the element. And uh, yeah, it's, a, it's just a, like a handy, a handy tool. And it exports exactly the same way. So if we do File and we export the textures, again, exactly the same. We just hit export. If we go now to this one right here, the only thing that we need to change, because as you can see right now, it's being cut out, is we need to go to the material, and instead of using a cutout, we're gonna use a dither. And by doing that, now we get this sort of like ghostly effect on the whole transparency sort of thing. So yeah, this is it, guys. This is the, the opacity or how you can control opacity on your uh, elements. Again, I usually use this for things like foliage, cloth, elements that you want to cut out, paper, stuff like that. So hopefully you like this one. And in the next video, we're going to take a look at displacement, which is another very, very important part here inside of Substance Picture. So let's go.